So, dear brothers, uh, last time we saw about the uh, subject about uh, tongues. I hope uh, you have no doubts uh, regarding uh, those things uh, in the Bible. The tongues uh, in the Bible means uh, it is understandable language. When the first, uh, uh, you see, uh, time the Holy Spirit uh, came upon the, you see, the church, uh, during the day of Pentecost, everybody began to speak in tongues. So if you see in the Bible, so uh, uh, they actually spoke uh, in uh, different languages, which everybody could uh, clearly understand. So that's what Apostle Paul clearly tells in First Corinthians 14 chapter, that uh, uh, tongues are an understandable language. And uh, uh, if anybody speaks in the church in the tongues, it should be maximum two or three. And uh, one should interpret. And if there is no interpreter, then uh, Apostle Paul tells clearly that uh, uh, that person should uh, keep silent in the church. Okay, uh, so we will continue with today's, uh, you see, the subject uh, that's uh, miracles. So today we can see a lot of, uh, you see, uh, meetings happening where, where big, big uh, uh, speakers uh, do a lot of uh, miracles. And healings, uh, you see, those who don't have ears, uh, they get, uh, they're able to hear. And those who don't have eyesight, their eyesight is uh, opened. And uh, those who are not able to walk, uh, you see, those people are, uh, you see, are seeing walk uh, on the stage. So, and so seeing all these things, uh, you see, uh, many people uh, uh, claim and think uh, and believe that this is all done by our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, let, let us for a few moments uh, uh, look into the Bible and see uh, what actually uh, Jesus did and uh, what is the uh, miracle which Jesus did uh, in the Bible. So let us read John 9, chapter verses 1 and uh, 6 and 7, brother. Can uh, any of you read, brother? Mosam, brother, or Krishna, brother, any of you read? Brother, or brother is absent today. I'm calling him, I'm calling him, brother. Okay, okay. okay. Krishna, brother, or Mosam, brother, anybody can read? Yeah, okay, brother. Hmm. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. When he had thus spoken, he sat on the ground and met clay of the spital and he anointed the eye of the blind man with the clay and said unto him go was in the pool of Salmon, which is by interpretation sin he went he, his way therefore and was and came seeing good so here you see that uh, jesus uh, healed a blind person who was born blind so what do you mean by born blind uh, does it mean that he had eyes and he could not see? Uh, you see, no, it's not that case. Uh, the case is that he, the person who was born blind he did not have the eye balls at all in his eye socket. See, we have got eye sockets, but instead of them, their eye balls are there for us. But for the born blind person, that eye socket itself was empty. How do we come to know? See, what did Jesus do in verse 6 and 7? It says, he took the clay. And uh, he put a spit uh, and he mixed it uh, and made it a, uh, you see, a soft clay and uh, applied inside that, uh, you see, the eye socket uh, and uh, told him to go and wash it uh, in the pool of Shiloh. And as uh, he washed, uh, what happened? The eyeballs began to grow in front of everybody so they can clearly see. See, this is the miracle that Jesus did. So, the person who did not have eyeballs at all, you see, and he got the eyesight. Let us read one more scripture, other miracle which Jesus did. Matthew 12 chapter, verse 10 and 13. Krishna brother, can you read? Matthew 12 chapter, verses 10 and 13. Krishna brother, you are there online? Yes, sir. I am going to read. Uh, Matthew 12, 10 and 10 to 13 or 10 and 13, sir? 10 and 13. 10. And behold, there was a man which had his hand with withdraw with her, with her, and they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day uh, that they might accuse him? 13. Mm. 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 Then said, he to the man stretched forth thine hand and he stretched uh, it forth and it was restored whole like 
as the other. Very good. So here, if you see in verse ten, it says there was a man with a withered hand. Now, what do you mean by a man with a withered hand? A man with a withered hand actually means, you see, the person who is having a hand, but from here there is no hand at all. See, we have got a complete hand. You see, the palm is there, the arms are there, everything. But this person, he had a hand. It was withered. That means he had a hand only till here. See, we can see some people who are having the fingers here itself, no? And uh, they won't have the large hand at all. So that is the meaning of a withered hand. Now, what did Jesus do? You see, they brought this particular person to accuse and catch hold of Jesus. But what did Jesus do? If you see, you see, he stretched forth his hand. That means he put his hand on the, you see, the withered hand person, and he prayed before everybody. So you see, what happened? The hand began to grow in front of everybody like this itself. And it was restored whole like as the other. That means both the hand became equal, it seems. Now, how did it happen? Did Jesus pray and tell, no, go to the home, don't worry, after a few days you come and show me, your hand would have been grown. Did he say that one? No. On the spot, you see, in front of everybody, what happened? The hand grew. That is the miracle which Jesus did during those days. Read one more incident. Luke 13, chapter verses 11 to 13. Uh, Moses, brother, can you read? Luke 11, uh, 13, chapter 11 to 13. Okay, brother. And, and behold, there was a woman which has a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift off herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called him to he, her to him and said unto her, O man, do art loose from thine infirmity, infirmity. And he laid his hand on her, and immediately she was made straight and uh, glorified God. Yeah. What happened? A, a woman was, you see, bowed down. You see, she could not lift herself for how many years? Sir? Not for one or two years, 18 years. Even after a lot of treatment, everything, everything she had done, everything, but she could not lift at all. So when Jesus prayed, what happened? On the spot, in front of everybody, he began to stretch forth and walk straightly, it seems. Uh, that is the miracle that Jesus did. And we all remember that how a woman, she was having a continuous blood flow, you see, for almost 12 years. Imagine the condition of that poor woman, how much, uh, uh, you see, she would have uh, lost everything. She had actually put uh, her uh, entire living uh, to cure herself, uh, but uh, she was not cured. What did she decide? You see, one day she decided to, you see, meet Jesus and she just touched the hem of uh, Jesus' cloth. What happened? Uh, in front of everybody, you see, she was totally healed. Uh, not that... Uh, she was healed partially and uh, she was restored completely later. No, dear brother. It is on the spot, on the very moment, you see, her uh, disease was healed. And Jesus said, I could feel it. You see, uh, she was made whole from the very moment. Read Matthew 9, chapter verse 20 to 22. Krishna, brother, can you read? Sure, sir. <clears throat> And behold, a uh, woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years come behind him and tossed him the hem of his garment. Uh, for she said with, within herself, if I may, I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. But Jesus turned him about and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. Very good. From that very hour, what happened? You see, she was totally healed. Not that she was, you see, healed later and all the other. So on the moment, she was healed. And we all know the other incident. That uh, where Jesus healed the ten lepers, uh, you see what happened? 
when uh, jesus uh, was going suddenly the 10 lepers came and met him and uh, cried uh, saying uh, oh lord uh, you see master uh, or son of david uh, have mercy on us and what did jesus do jesus told them okay go and show it to the priest go and show it to the priest and offer offerings as per the law of moses immediately you see it what happened as they were going on the way they were completely healed things let us read this verses they are very beautiful look 17 chapter brother verses 12 to 14 brother uh mosam brother can you read okay brother and as he entered into a certain place, there met him ten men that were leprous, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said un unto them, Go, show yourself unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. As they were went... You see, as they were going on the way, what happened? They were totally healed, it seems. Immediately, one person realized and came running back, giving gratitude he said, to Jesus and glorifying God. You see, so how much moment did it take to cure the entire disease of leprosy? On the spot, dear brethren, not even a few minutes. On the spot, as they were walking few steps in front of everybody, you see, they were totally healed. You know, leprosy, what I mean, sir, if a leprosy, if a person is infected by leprosy, you see, all the fingers, sir, all the, you see, organs are, are totally disformed. You see, it's a, the, the diseases, you see, actually eats off the bones, sir, and the cells and the tissues, everything. They are totally deformed. They are very awkward to look like. Uh, and uh, you see, the nose would have gone, the ears would have gone, the lips, sir. You see, they would have been so very pathetic uh, condition. But as uh, they believed and walked a few steps, uh, imagine in front of everybody and they could see what happened. Uh, the fingers growing in front of uh, them. And uh, the ear, the nose, everything was restored. Uh, completely perfect. You see, this is the miracle that Jesus did during his days. Uh, and we all know this incident uh, where uh, uh, the soldier, Malchus, he came to arrest Jesus. But uh, at that time, uh, Peter took the knife uh, and smote him. Actually, he was supposed to eat, uh, to behead his head, but uh, he just uh, turned a little bit and what happened? Uh, knife passed through his uh, ears and uh, ears was cut and fell down. What did Jesus do? Immediately, you see, Jesus took that fallen ear and immediately put it back uh, on the ears of Malkos. Look, 22, 50 to 51. You see, dear brethren, imagine what happened. On the moment, Malkos's ear was totally healed. And later he became a Christian. That is given in the Bible. You see, dear brethren, how did Jesus do the miracle? Did he uh, put anesthesia and put the stitches and take him to doctor? And after healing, did he... Pray, don't worry, everything will be healed and God will take care. All those things we are praying for you. Did you mention? No. On the moment, on the spot. You see, he just took the ears, just put it. I don't know what, uh, uh, you see, uh, glue you put, uh, heavy bond or heavy quick or all dead. Nobody knows, sir. You see, grace of God, uh, each and every nerve, internal, everything would have got cut. But as soon as Jesus kept like this, what happened? Uh, everything got, uh, you see, uh, healed. This is the miracle what Jesus did. Dear brethren, just think, are these types of miracle happening today? Jesus, you see, uh, healed the dumb, dumb, and uh, you see, and the deaf person. That means the persons who are not able to speak at all, entire dumb, totally dumb. Entire, totally deaf. They are not able to hear or listen anything. You see, not able to speak at all. As soon as Jesus opened their ears and mouth, they began to glorify God. They, began, they spoke clearly. Not that they spoke partially. Uh, uh, okay, okay, I'm not able to speak. Uh, okay, no, 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 no. 
I am able to speak correctly, properly, exactly. That is the way Jesus did miracles. Read Mark 7 chapter 32 to 35. Mark 7 chapter verse 32 to 35. Can somebody read? <clears throat> 32 to 35? Yes. And when she was come to her house, she found the devil gone out. And Mark, Mark no, sir? Mark 7, chapter 32 to 35. Uh, and they bring unto him one that was deaf and had an impi impediment in his speech. And they best wished him to put his hand upon him. And he took him aside from the multitude and put his fingers into his ear and he spit and tossed his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sang, sang and said unto him, Ipata, that is be upon. And straight away his ears were opened, and the string of his tongue was loosed, and he sp speak plain. He speak plain, very clearly. That means not that he began to, uh, earlier he was speaking uh, 20 percent, now he began to speak 50 percent. No, 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 100 out of 100 percent on the spot. But up and uh, he was healed. But today, dear brethren, is the our district. Uh, these types of miracles happening today? Are these types of healing happening today? Dear brethren, not only at one, today we see a huge crowd where thousands of lakhs of people gather together. We said, get crowded. Why? For healing. Get healed. But are all healed? No. Only a few people are healed. And that was some particular persons whose names are called. Today in this uh, prayer meeting, I am telling you, a person by name, Elizabeth is there. She has come from very far. I know it very clearly. I am able to see it. Uh, sister, you have this pain. Please come on the stage. Why call particularly only that particular sister? Huh? They tell, no, 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 God has spoken to us. If God has spoken to you, some only about particular sister, now why call for the entire crowd? You call that particular sister, no? You call that only the particular sisters and particular brothers and particular people and heal those only few people, no? Why call everybody and waste their time? And not only one, uh, immediately the people tell that, uh, you see, big, big uh, uh, miracle workers, they tell that, uh, no, they don't have faith. Uh, if they, there is a reason that God has not blessed them. And God is not hearing their prayers. Dear brother, what did Jesus pray? In faith, you ask whatever you want in my name, my father will give it to us. Did he say, imagine, do you think this? these people, so much of crowd, they come from so much of far places, uh, with, with such uh, trouble, pain, sickness, uh, you see, a lot of financial burden, even then they come. Do they come without having faith, dear brethren? Just think, no, they come in faith, dear brethren. They come having faith on the Lord. So, so many people tell that, uh, you see, they don't have faith. Uh. But uh, did Jesus heal the persons only who had faith? No. Similarly, once what happened? A person whose son was demon-possessed, uh, you see, he came crying to the Lord. Uh. You see, he begged the Lord, Lord, have mercy on me. Please heal my son. I can't see my son suffering like this. Uh. And he said, uh, uh, Jesus said, uh, if you have faith, uh, he will be healed. Uh. He said, Lord, I believe, but help though my unbelief. I, I want to believe it, but I'm not able to believe it. You see, I've tried so many things, but nothing is working out. Please help me out. What did Jesus say? Did Jesus say, no, you don't have faith, you come next year? No, you come after your faith is increased? No, what did Jesus do? Let us read. Mark 9, chapter 23 to 24. Mark 9, chapter 23 to 24. Most of the mm -hmm. brother, can you read? Okay, brother. Jesus said unto him, If thou can't believe, all things are possible to him that believe. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. Ah, yet though my unbelief. What did he mean? Jesus, 
healed him and sent her. Increase their faith. You see, dear brethren, when you know that uh, people don't have faith, why don't you increase their faith? Why don't you give them a good, uh, healthy food, a meat in due season, increase their faith? No. Do you think they come from so far places without having faith? Without having faith, will anybody come? No, dear brethren, we need to understand, dear brethren. So, uh, dear brethren, and moreover, did Jesus heal only the few people who came in searching of him? Let us read the Bible. What does the Bible say? Jesus healed everybody. Please underline it in your Bible. Everybody. He did not leave anybody who came to him. You see, though he were his enemies, Jesus did good to them. Mark 4, chapter 23 to 24, brother. Mark 4, chapter 23 to 24. <laughs> Uh, read with that. Matthew 4, sir. Correct. Matthew 4, 23 24. Sorry. O okay, sir. 23 24. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogue and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases among the people. <laughs> all manner. All. All manner, all sicknesses. No exceptions. No, this disease is very difficult. I can't relate. Go to the doctor. Go to the cancer hospital. Go to the AIDS hospital. The disease is there. Every types of disease. All, everything, whatever you say. It was healed on the spot. Not that it was healed partially. I'm feeling better now. Okay, okay. I'll come again next year. Again, same thing will be there. This disease, this disease. Oh. Then continue with that, huh? And his fame went throughout all Syria. All Syria. And they, ah. Yeah. And they brought unto him all sick people all that sick were people. Able underline. To... All sick people. They brought all the sick people. Then that were taken with diverse diseases and torments, and those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic lunatic and those that had the palsy and he held them he healed them read matthew 8 16 brother when the evil was come they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils he cast out the spirit which is word he healed all that was sick. Ah, healed all. Underline all. Not the few that were sick. All that were sick. Read Mark first chapter 32 to 34. Mm. Most of the read. And at, mm. Okay, brother. And at even when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased and them that were passed it with devils. And all the city was gathered together at the door. Underline and it. Healed. Entire city was gathered at his door. Not few people. When Jesus did public meetings, it was not in thousands. It was in lakhs. Entire city was at the door. Then, huh? And all the city were, was gathered together at the door. And he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases and cast out many devils and suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him. See? He did not suffer them to speak. Everybody was healed. That's the reason the entire city was uh, at the door. So when Jesus uh, did the uh, meetings, how many people have followed? We know it very well. 4,000 people and uh, 5,000 people. And what did Jesus do? After uh, healing them, he sent them away saying it is fasting and prayer. No, 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 no. Jesus gave them food and said this is feasting and prayer. Jesus did not collect offering at that moment. God. But he did have good for everybody and gave them what type of food? Not vegetarian, non-vegetarian food. And said them, this is feasting and prayer. Uh, we know uh, this one, no? About uh, Jesus feeding 5,000 and 4,000. So, many people today claim that, uh, no brother, Jesus has said that, that uh, those who believe in Jesus will do still greater miracles than what Jesus did. Isn't it? That verse, let us read. 
John 14, 12. Brother. Also, brother, can you read John 14, 12? Hmm. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believe on me, the works that do shall be, the works that I do shall he do also, and gather greater works that then these all he do, because I go unto my father. Mm, because I go unto my father. Very really, very really, very really I sent you. He that believed on me, huh, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than huh, himself, huh, they will do it himself. Now you tell me, what is the greatest miracle what Jesus did? Tell me, among all the miracles of Jesus, which is the greatest of all the miracles that Jesus did? Can anybody tell me? Jesus saved the dead soul, dead ah, body. Yes. Raising the dead is the greatest of all the miracles. Now you tell me, what is the greater miracle than raising the dead? Jesus said, I rose the dead people back to life. But my disciples will do a greater work than raising the people from the dead. Now which is that one? What brother you are asking? Brother, who can do greater miracle than raising the dead? But I yet, think ah, correct. Yet the scripture says there is one miracle which Jesus never did. Now, what is that one? You might all be wondering what brother, what Jesus did everything now. Everything was possible from him now. Yes, but one thing was not possible. That means he did not do it, not that it was not possible. Okay. So he did not do it. What is that one? Jesus never opened the eyes of understanding. He said, he that has eyes, let them see. He that has ears, let them see. Or ear. Jesus never opened, you see, the eyes of understanding. He opened little eyes and told them not to sin. But he never opened the eyes of understanding. This is the miracle which Jesus has told the church to do, to go preach to the ends of the world and do what? And open the eyes of understanding. Read Ephesians 1.18, brother. Ephesians 1.18. Krishna, brother, can you read Ephesians 1.18? Ephesians. 118. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to read. Uh, the eyes of your understanding being in, enlightened, enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Ah, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Did Jesus open say anybody eyes of understanding? No. Oh. He said, you're all blinded. The blind, least blind, both will fall into the pit. That's what Jesus said. But never open the eyes of uh, anybody's understanding. Uh, and uh, what did Jesus say? He that has ears, let him hear. He said, blessed are your ears for the ear. This is the, the ears of uh, understanding, the grasping the truth. Uh, you see? And moreover, Jesus cast out literal devil. Correct, huh? Huh? But uh, did uh, Jesus uh, huh? heal them of their uh, sin? No. He healed them of the sickness. But uh, did Jesus uh, heal them of the sin? No. Never. What did Jesus say after doing the miracle? He said, go sin no more. That means there is a possibility for that person to always sin. But uh, this miracle the church are only granted to do. That means heal them completely of their sin. Cast out the devil. You see, the evil, the Satan spirit in us and turn to God. See, read Romans 8, 11 and Acts 26, 18, brother. Romans 8, 11 and Acts 26, 18, brother. Most of brother, can you read? Okay, brother. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead will dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that 
dwells in you. Hmm. See, cook in the mortal body. Jesus rose the dead people back to life. But uh, here, what happens? Uh? Huh? Though we are living, we are dead in the sight of God. Uh, Jesus is bringing us back to life and have fellowship with the Father. Bringing us to touch uh, and contact with the Father. Read Acts 26, 18. Acts 26, 18. Hmm. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins mm. and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Mm. You see? Transferred from the kingdom of Satan, power of Satan to God. It's in you see, the brain, huh? This is the the miracle that the church is supposed to do. And this, the church has been doing for the past 2,000 years. And uh, moreover, when Jesus prayed, uh, did he, you see, uh, plead with the Father like this only, Oh Lord, please, I don't know, please do this miracle. I want this miracle. Did he beg with the Lord? No. He requested the Lord. Oh, Lord, oh Father, you see, if it be thy will, uh, let this cup uh, pass from me. But uh, nevertheless, not my will, but as the will. Matthew 26, 39. Jesus never, you see, uh, fought with God until he was blessed. Just put the request to the Father. And if it was his will, would have been healed at the end. This is the way the real Christian's uh, spirit should be there. You see, God's protection will always be there. There's no doubt at all. But even then, see, what are we desiring? What are we seeking from the Lord? You see, Apostle Paul was so filled with the Holy Spirit that if somebody put his kerchief, handkerchief on the dead or the sick people, they would be totally healed of the disease himself. Read Acts of the Apostles, 19 chapter 11 and 12. Krishna Mother, can you read Acts 19, 11 to 12? Krishna Badar, you are there? Yes. Acts 19, 11 to 12. 9 to. Acts 19, chapter 11 to 12. And, and God wrought a special miracle by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto the sick hand and and crips and of thrones, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Disease were healed, it seems, sir. When Apostle Paul's, Paul's cloth were put on the dead, and the sick people, and the evil spirits ran off, it seems, sir. Imagine if Apostle Paul's handkerchief had so much of power, then how much more powerful would Apostle Paul be? But if you read in the Bible, eh, you see, Apostle Paul requested the Lord uh, three times uh, that uh, he may take away the thorn which is, was in his flesh. But uh, did it go? No. Lord never took the thorn which was in his flesh. What happened? God replied saying, my grace is sufficient for you. Read 2 Corinthians 12 chapter. You see? Verses uh, 8, 9 and 10. Brother, huh? Also, brother, can you read? Uh. Yeah, okay, brother. Seven, seven also, brother. Okay, read. Read from seven also. And lest I should be exiled above measure through the abundance of the revelation, there was given to me a throne in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, mm. lest I should be exiled above measure. Okay. The messenger of Satan to buffet me. A thorn was there in the flesh of Shimsa. And that is compared, what? To the messenger of Satan with Shimsa. Imagine, the say, where is Satan? Always it is there in his body, Shimsa. Now, what is this one thorn? We'll see in some other subject. But then, when he requested the Lord, what did the Lord reply? Continue with us. For, for these things, I besought the Lord thrice, 
that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Ah, Most... You see, what did the God reply? My grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is perfected in your weakness. Sir. That was the way the apostles, the disciples, uh, you see, saw the Lord's uh, overruling providence in their life. They never pleaded for miracles and sought for all these uh, things. Apostle Paul never fought with the Lord until his prayers were answered. He prayed three times. Once it was not answered, he clearly understood that it was not God's will. Immediately surrendered to the Lord. But Apostle Paul, what did he do? He rejoiced in the sufferings for Christ's sake. Just see the sufferings, how Apostle Paul suffered. Second Corinthians 11 chapter, verses 24 to 25, brother. Second Corinthians 11 chapter. Can somebody read? Krishna, brother, Mosam, brother. Huh. 24 to 25, brother. Hmm. Of the Jews, five times received I forty, forty strips, save one. Hmm? How many times he received, sir? Five times he has received forty stripes, less one. That means thirty-nine stripes he has received. How many times, sir? Not one or two times. Five times he received. If uh, somebody hits us like this for uh, one time itself, what we will do? We would never come again. We would never turn this side at all. See, we won't even sleep also, this side. We will just walk away. Apostle Paul, how many times? Five times. Continue. Next. Thrice I was beaten with road. See? Thrice I was beaten with what? It seems, huh? Wooden rod. Iron rod. Huh? Thrice. How many bones would have broken? Imagine the brethren. But still having faith and continued the Lord's work, thrice it seems. Huh? Then continue. Once was I stoned. See, once thrice. I was stoned. You know how he was stoned? People stoned him to death. Apostle Paul fell unconscious. Everybody thought that he is dead and went away. And after a few moments, Apostle Paul woke up and walked again. That was the way Apostle Paul suffered for Christ's sake. Next brother. Huh? Thrice I suffered shipwreck. See? Thrice I suffer, suffered shipwreck. The ship in which was traveling for the Lord's work was totally destroyed. How many times? Not one, two, three times. If you are going somewhere for the last ministry and something, an accident happened, what will we think of? Oh, we will think this is evil spirit. Oh, this is the uh, bad omen. We should never go. Lord is telling us not to go. But what did Apostle Paul do? He continued. In all these incidents, this Apostle Paul cried to the Lord, Oh Lord, please, I'm asking you to miracle. Did he cry? Eh? No, read, continue. Next, what happens? Next, brother. Huh? A night and a day, I have been in the deep. Night and day, I have been in the deep means in the sea. We can't even sleep in the seashore for one night. Try it and see. Your heart will shiver. The sound is like that, the sound of the waves. You see, it's so chill, so dangerous. But Apostle Paul spent a night and a day in the middle of the sea. In all these things did he request for miracles. Wonders to happen. He only asked for Lord's mercy, dear brethren. Dear brethren, God is faithful. He will always take care of us. He is just uh, testing God's children. This one, each and every God's child should understand. Uh, next, if you see, the verse 26, brother, continue with it. Huh? In, in journeys often, in peals of waters, in Peals of robbers in peals by mine own countrymen, in peals by the hidden, in peals in the city, in peals in the wilderness, in peals in the sea, in peals among false brethren. Hmm. 
in weariness and painfulness in watching often in hunger and thirst in fastings often in cold and nakedness See? beside how many times he was hunger how many times he was without food water how many times he was in cold and nakedness not even proper clothes to wear in all these things did he cry to the lord huh what do you say 28 was beside those things that are without uh, that which cometh upon me daily the cares of all who is weak i am not weak who is offended i burn not uh, if i must need glory i will glory of the things which concern my infirmities in all this things i glory i thank the lord uh, that was the spirit of apostle paul dear brethren dear brethren so many faithful christians uh, in the dark ages you know they were beheaded and persecuted in various ways uh, did any of them cry for deliverance that they may be saved from death they submitted to the lord to his will dear brethren uh, you see what did jesus say he said first seek uh, the kingdom of god and his righteousness uh, everything shall be added unto you matthew 6:33 being a christian i should have faith on the lord god never loses his promise he always keeps his promise what does the bible say now what did apostle paul say he said there is no temptation taken you by such as common to man but god is faithful he will not suffer you to be tempted beyond your measure as the temptation is coming he will prepare a way for you to escape and give it the strength to bear the burden what promises the burden even after all these promises if you are still crying to the lord ways of faith what did jesus say matthew 626 behold see the sparrows of the sky they never reap so or you see grow anything but god feeds them are you not much better than the sparrows didn't jesus say that one you see You should have faith in the Lord. What did Jesus say? Matthew 10, 30. Each and every hairs of your head have been counted. We need to have faith in the Lord. Daily coming, how many hairs first to the ground? Have you ever wondered and worried about, oh, today my one year is fallen? No. We don't take care. Much concern about one year. The things which we are least attentive to, God is looking after even small, small, minute matters to your brethren. God said, don't worry. I will never leave you enough for secure. Though anybody leaves you, what more do we need? All these promises are made for whom? It is for us, dear brethren. We just need to have faith and believe it. And God will definitely do good always to us. Read Hebrews 13.5, brother. Hebrews 13.5. Hmm. Read. Hmm. Hebrew 13. See? Let your conversation be without covetousness. Be content with whatever you are. Whatever the Lord has blessed, be satisfied with God. He said, I will never leave you or forsake you. What more do we want? Huh? What happened in the Lord's life? Huh? Did he sleep on bed of roses and have a comfortable life, luxurious life and went to heaven? No. Oh. How did Jesus suffer? Read Hebrews 2.10. Hebrews 2.10. Krishna Badar, can you read Hebrews 2.10? Yes, sir. Hebrews 2.10. 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 For I became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory to make uh, make the captain for their salvation perfect through suffering ah the captain of our salvation jesus christ was made perfect through sufferings in his life itself there were sufferings he came to perfection how it is only through sufferings if jesus has come to perfection only through sufferings then they will think about our life He was always obedient. He was his son. But we were 
Sin is always disobedient. Aliens to God. And should we not have sufferings in our life? Suffering is a sign that we are still in God's sight. That we are running for the crown. That we are faithful Christians. If we don't have sufferings in our life, we need to put a question mark whether I am God's child or not. Read 2 Timothy 3.12. 2 Timothy 3.12. Yeah, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Uh, yeah, all that will live godly. If you are trying to live a godly life in Christ, you shall suffer persecution. You shall suffer. Bible doesn't say you may suffer. Probably it may happen. No, 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 no. It's a you shall. That means it is a must condition. If you are trying to live a true Christian life, dear brethren, there won't be happiness, joy in your life. There will be sufferings. But in the sufferings, you can taste the Lord. In the sufferings, you can see the Lord's hand in your life. In the sufferings, God will give you the peace. What did Jesus say? I will give you the peace, not as the world gives. You see, how does the world give the peace? If you get salary correctly in time, before first, ah, what peace. If you have plenty of food to eat, what peace. Huh? Sunday, Sunday, carry the Bible, go to the church and come. As soon as you come, huh? biryani should be ready. What peace. Ah, ah, ah. Eat nicely. Sleep nicely. Evening, go. Roam about. See beautiful movie. Sleep. Pray. What peace. This is not the peace Jesus promised. Jesus said, you shall be suffer, suffering in all, all the ways. You shall be persecuted. You shall be cheated. Huh? Everybody will speak falsely about you. But in all those things, don't worry. You will have peace where in your mind. That is the peace Jesus promised. This is the greatest miracle. This is the miracle which Jesus promised to the church. What I have done, even the greater things they shall do, they shall have the peace in mind. They have run. So, this is about uh, miracles. So, still, we're going to read about uh, more about, uh, you see, uh, prophecies, visions, uh, and uh, more about the Holy Spirit in the next week. Okay? So, any doubts, any questions you have, you can ask.